Why are we talking about software? The world's changing. The world's changing. You know, I, and I probably would be uh, misguided to sit here and say, I'm going to tell you guys that, you know, the infusion of digital intelligence is big news. Everybody knows that. Probably um, the real point here to make on this discussion is, is, is the variety in which digital intelligence is, is infusing our society. You know, everybody does know what's going on with the mobile and the handheld space. But then if you go and you talk about what's going on in the enterprises, you know, and then you start talking to some of the people that I talk to about running all these power plants and power grids, and they got sensors all over the place, and, and each one of these power companies generates more data in a day than they had in the previous 50 years. Or if you talk to uh, other segments of the population about uh, what's going on in medical and, and the amount of medical information that's being generated every day, and that all has to be handled. That's really what leads into the discussion of, of, of why open and Linux and open source is so important to us. If, if any one company, even one to scale or the size of IBM, is pretending to handle all of this data, generate um, and solve all of these problems, you're nuts. It ain't going to happen. Um, you, you need to invoke the entire open source community. You need to invoke everybody to go and solve these problems and, that, and then integrate them. And that's what you know, the speed and integration is about. And of course, there's the choice point as well, that, that people don't want vendor lock and people don't want to be tied to one spot. And that's a real important point also. Um, but that definitely the ability to get the right amount of innovation and make things happen is, is really the core of the discussion of why uh, Linux and open software are so important. IBM has a, has a long history as well in participating with this crowd. Um, we've been talking about it a little bit and, and over dinner last night, and uh, I've been looking, up, looking things up a little bit. We started in 2000 uh, with our first uh, effort, and it was really led by a gentleman by the name of Irving Wadowski Berger. And in, in my preparation for um, coming here to talk to you, I started looking up and reading up on uh, the start of IBM's first investment in uh, Linux. You know, we made a, you know, a roughly a billion dollar investment in the year 2000 to, uh, to start our Linux effort. And I was reading up on it, uh, what, what Irving Wodowski Berger did when he first started. He wrote a whole article in 2006 about the start of that. And I wanted to read a little bit of what Irving had to say. I thought it was real important. And, and I kind of wish I was going to say it, but it, um, Irving got called by Sam Palmazano after spending four years starting, leading IBM's network division. And uh, we announced in 2000 a strong commitment to Linux, and it didn't go so well. Um, it was mixed, met with a pretty mixed reaction. And uh, so Irving spent a year evangelizing in the year 2000. And here's what he said he did during that year in the year 2000 evangelizing. On February 3rd, I gave the keynote presentation at the Linux World Conference in New York, saying we did not view Linux as just another OS any more than we viewed the internet as just another network. We viewed Linux very much as part of the evolution towards open standards to help integrate systems, applications, and info over the internet. Linux was and continues to be the only popular operating system that runs every single platform regardless of vendor a property it shares with just about all major software associated with the internet. So Irving said that in 2000. It's very, very true today. Um, I could, you know, if I were just to say that today, um, I think everybody would agree. But he said that in 2000. And uh, that was the start of IBM's commitment to Linux. And I think what he said is very true. Linux is not just another OS any more than the internet is just another network. It is a way to develop. It's a way to do things that couldn't be done otherwise, and it's very important. Oh, a couple other points on this. Um, one of the other things you can notice about this timeline of IBM's commitment to open source, it's accelerating. Um, if you look uh, right there, we've got, uh, in the past two years, we've, we've committed to four or five different open source projects, including you know, helping form the Open Daylight Consortium, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the Open Power Consortium. That's a, an effort that I've been leading and spending a lot of time on here of late, and we're, we're pretty, uh, pretty excited about that. 
The Open Power Consortium is very powerful in that it's taking a lot of the principles that I just talked about, Irving talked about, around open software, and we're moving them into hardware to, to make it more pervasive, more innovative, and more things to happen. Um, what we're doing uh, is we're taking our, our chip IP, the power chip IP, that powers all of our big IBM systems, and we're, we're making that open and available for people to innovate with, to drive more innovation in the industry. You can see the partners that we're launching this with. This is the initial core set of partners. One of the things that you, we learned from that previous page of launching many of these open source consortiums is if you get too many people in the bed all at once to try and launch an open org, um, it, you don't get a lot of consensus right away. So uh, we're, we kept it to a smaller group, and then we'll grow to a bigger group later. But the, the need that we're trying to fill is, is that you know, today, you know, if you look at what's going on with a lot of the big web 2.0s and many companies in general, there's a lot of innovation taking place you know, at the system level, hooking together different I.O. sources, different uh, network sources and such together at the system level. But as technology continues to shrink and integrate, more and more of that innovation is taking place at the chip level. And now this is going to allow that innovation to continue on at the chip level. We give people choice in the manufacturing, people choice in design, and we're going to help them do it. It's a pretty exciting change in the industry. Likewise, you know, we are creating choice then. Um, we also, you know, just like in, with the uh, you know, open soft, source software, the choice is just as important as is the, the innovation in technology. Um, to go with this, we're creating the first open source uh, software stack, including firmware, to be accompanying the, the chip design. So now we'll have a full open source firmware stack, OS, hypervisor, management stack, all available with a consistent set of hardware. And then that should enable people to be able to do an, an open innovation around chip design as well as system design. We, we expect this to have a very big impact. So moving forward, wh why, is, why is IBM attacking uh, Linux and, and moving the Linux so hard as well as uh, innovating across this whole stack? And it's really just two reasons. One is I mean, both of them are the important ingredients to a successful adventure. One is, is that just this past year, I don't know if everybody knows this, but Linux did surpass the size of the Unix market in this past year. Uh, the Linux now market now is bigger than the Unix market, so there is a much bigger business opportunity. The Unix market is relatively flat. We continue to take share in it, but it is not a growing market. The Linux market is growing much, much faster. But the second thing is there is also a technical need, which is, um, most of the Linux x86 market is serviced by commodity hardware that is not designed from the ground up to be attacked by servers. Our systems are designed from the ground up to be server quality systems. Largest caches in the industry, largest uh, amount of threads per die in the industry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We have server targeted designs from the ground up. As, as the big data and this explosion of applications and explosion of things takes place in the industry, um, we believe that the power system hardware on the Linux open software stack is going to be the solution to make, make things happen. And um, as you can see here, we got you know, KVM, Linux, the whole open software stack upon which we can build the applications that the industry needs. You know, and, and the, 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 the flagship right now of uh, our Linux uh, application IBM's developing is Watson. If you get in front of a keynote conference like this, and I don't say Watson at least once, I get in trouble. So we're going to talk about Watson a little bit. Um, Watson, um, you know, right now is um, um, most famous, I think most of you know, for playing and winning at the Jeopardy. Uh, my mom found it to be a very important point. For 20 years, I've been building microprocessors in IBM, and I'd call her up and say, hey, mom, I just built Power 6, the highest frequency microprocessor in the world. And she'd go, that's nice. Then I'd say, uh, hey, mom, you know, I called up and said, Watson, I think there's one on Jeopardy. We built the brain for it. She goes, that's great. Can you send me one? And, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I told that story to Jenny when she visited IBM Austin, and, uh, and uh, that actually made her first all-hands meeting, that the importance of Watson was now that everybody's mother understood what we did. So 
It's good stuff. But, but we're moving now, Watson, into more than just the uh, game show market. We've conquered the game show market with an unblemished record. And, and you can see the first uh, task that we're taking on that's worthy of ops, Watson's skills and capabilities is, uh, is the, the cure and treatment of cancer. And um, you know, we, we got a, a set, set up with a Memorial Sloan Kettering and WellPoint where you know, doctors you know, can put in the patient's symptoms, you know, describe it all to it, and um, the, the Watson feeds back uh, 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 an analysis of uh, these kind of treatments or what you need to do to treat a patient with these systems. But what's really cool is, is it's also interactive in real time. You know, the patient sits down across from the doctor, and then it comes out, oh, I got a little blood in my phlegm, you know, and, and then they type that in, and then a new treatment comes back, and it's, it's a very, very powerful tool, and it's, it's a very exciting thing uh, that we think it's really going to improve the uh, cure and treatment of cancer. You know, right now there's statistics like, you know, like one in, one in five patients, you know, isn't getting top-level uh, treatment for cancer, and uh, this should hopefully, you know, level that playing field as it becomes more and more pervasive. Um, we also have other applications for Watson that is built on the, uh, the Linux and the Apache stack, which is uh, also the, uh, the call center uh, business. Uh, we have some of the largest call centers in the world are using Watson-like technology to improve the level of service there. My laptop just broke a couple weeks ago, so I'm all for you know, buffing that industry up a little bit. We could go a little better there. And uh, we hope Watson will be able to do that also. Got a few more examples of, of various uh, um, applications around Linux on power that we're, we're going on just for, just for you guys to see. You know, the top two are you know, taking um, Linux applications and really applying them and, and leveraging you know, some of power's core strengths of performance and scalability. The bottom left one is, uh, is a small business that's growing really rapidly. And uh, they just needed security and a good database to hold their customers' secure data and uh, good performance. And uh, that little car company in the Netherlands is, is using Power Linux for that. Bottom right is uh, you know, a classic consolidation play, um, which is you know, what really has fueled the power business for IBM for the longest time. You know, IT Informatic recently consolidated onto a Power Linux platform and got uh, you know, about half the cores, half the IT operational cost. Uh, with that consolidation play. But all of the things that we've done with Power, uh, we are now doing as well on the Power Linux platform, and that's uh, what we're doing with these uh, examples here. So, so IBM is, is, is very, very heavily invested in the success of Linux. You know, every one of our systems, just as Irving said you know, 13 years ago, every system we got runs Linux. And uh, we got 400 plus software products, that's a, from our software group, that um, are all uh, running on Linux as well, and as well as we've you know, given a whole lot of patents to, to help with the protection and the, and the uh, legal issues around uh, Linux, and as well as we have lots of people developing. It's 600 plus because uh, we're continuing to move more and more developers to the Linux platform every day. Um, so, so then we go on, you know, Jim alluded to um, that, that we had an announcement to make. And so then you know, we, we were announcing today as well that we, you know, we're um, going to donate, uh, donate. <laughs> we're going to invest a billion dollars. Well, maybe we'll donate. You know, <laughs> well, <laughs> well Dan, Dan Fry's in the back of the room, and I think he brought his checkbook. So everybody in the room gets their share of a billion dollars here. <laughs> that was Dan Fry. F <laughs> All right, see, there you go. See, even the hardware guy can make the software guys happy. That's good. Give them a billion dollars. OK, so we got that equation solved. So, so Power Systems is, uh, we, are, we are investing a billion dollars around Power Systems and Linux. And uh, it's, it's coming out in, in many, many forms. We're, we're shifting um, more and more development to, uh, to Power Linux, as well as um, we're creating some development centers. We've created three or four of them around the country. We're, we're announcing the opening of one more um, Linux power de development center in Montpellier, France. Um, if any of you guys haven't been to Montpellier, France, it's a good place to go. I would suggest if you want to work on your Linux apps on power, go there. Good spot, very nice. Uh, uh, and also, uh, we're, we're also creating a, a Linux developer cloud 
we'll give people very, very quick access to, to hardware um, so they can do development on, on power, which is, ex is extremely important to uh, the effectiveness of, of, of getting more and more people in this open source environment innovating on power. So um, this is a, an important piece of what we're doing. We're, this money will be spent over the next four to five years um, with our, our development teams and with um, our, our partners and ISVs as well. And you know, the first investment we made you know, back in 2000 had a tremendous impact on Linux in the industry. And we, we believe that this investment as well is going to have a strong impact also. Um, a few other things um, that I wanted to share with you. Um, is, is we're doing a little bit of a uh, promotional here, um, a little contest to uh, see what the next best power app to put on uh, Linux on power. Now, the cool thing about this was, is I was going to say, you know, hey, everybody can come up here to the screen right now and, and click on that thing. You know, it says click to the right. But they tested it beforehand. Now, it works all the way to about the back of the room. So from your seat, you can click on that and get to this uh, website. and. Uh, and uh, you know, put your idea in for the next big app, and you get a chance to win an iPad. Uh, we'll see some fun stuff come out of this and see what great new apps can come up. And we'll be working on some of those ideas with the Power Development team. Finally, um, we got a little booth uh, uh, here set up. And uh, we got uh, the Watson uh, uh, Jeopardy Challenge at the booth. You know, that's kind of fun. I've done that myself. Go and take on Watts and see if you can uh, answer a few more uh, questions than they can. And um, let's see, I think that's everything on that that I've already talked about. So I really appreciate your all's attention, appreciate your time, appreciate the invitation to be here, and uh, thank you very much.